uh, Isaiah chapter number one, uh, and I'm just going to look at the the, the the key verse this this morning uh, and things, and we'll get into this. I'm very what I'm going to do here. My introduction is going to be a little weird. It's very unusual, untypical of me and my introduction, but hang with me uh, in things. I'm doing it to kind of give you an idea of what uh, uh, is said here. But uh, verse number 11 here, uh, if you look at this first question here that that God uh, is giving to the children of Israel here, he says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Now, the title of this message is this. What difference does it make? What difference does it make? And uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, please help me. I pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord, that if we're faithful to to uh, read and study your word, that you'll give us the things that we need. And Lord, I just thank you for that. Lord, I just pray you please help us this morning as we open up your word here now. Lord, please speak to our hearts, change us for you, strengthen us, and help us, Lord, I pray. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, some months ago, and again, hang with me, I don't normally do this, but some months ago, one of the most corrupt politicians in America was sitting before a congressional committee that was trying to figure out why an American ambassador and other war heroes were not given the resources they needed to stay alive while serving our country in Benghazi. At one point during the questioning, she made a statement that uh, showed her true cold heart and such. She said this, she said, at this point, what difference does it make? Now what she was saying was, of all this investigating and this probing and trying to find out who's responsible for, all, for this horrific tragedy is pointless. It was a waste of time uh, because it was not going to bring those four Americans back to life. Now, she was being hypocritical in saying this because she was one of the biggest screamers of forming the 9-11 committee to find out who dropped the ball that caused several thousand American lives to be lost. Now, the truth of the matter is one life or 10,000 lives, it should matter. Make any difference who you know it should matter we should we should find out so we don't uh hurt no matter who it is no matter who's in office we should find out we want to find these things out so hillary made this statement to try to folk to take the focus off of her because she was overseeing this whole benghazi thing and she knew that the that she was one of the incompetent ones that allowed these men to be killed without getting the assistance they deserved uh, and then not even trying to save their lives uh, and, and such. Uh, uh, and, and, and then also they could have had more assistance there to maybe not even allow this to even happen because they had had enough assistance. And she knew that she was uh, guilty of this and things. So she tried to take the focus off. All right. Now, I've given you this example because here in Isaiah, the word of the Lord is given to Isaiah here. The children of Israel have rebelled against God, all right? Uh, and, and after God, all God had done for them, they have rebelled against him. If you look at verse number two there uh, uh, and such, he says, Look, hear, O ye heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So God is saying, look, listen, people, I have nourished you. I've brought you up. And you have rebelled against me, all right, uh, and, and, and such. Uh, and so Isaiah then, in verse number 10, begins to preach to Israel uh, and such. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and the first thing here that he tells them is found in verse number 11 here. He says, he says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? All right. God goes on to say, look. I am full of your offerings unto me. I'm full of them, all right? In other words, God is telling them, what difference do these offerings you are making unto me make? That's what he's saying here. To what person? What difference do they, they make? Why are you doing this? Here's what he's saying. Why are you doing these things? Your heart ain't right. Why are you doing this? Your heart is not right. You're, you're rebelling. You're, 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 you're living a lie, if you please. You're rebelling and such. And he says, you're laden with the iniquity. You have forsaken me. Uh, you are corruptors. Look at these verses uh, all the way up to verse number 10. Uh, you've provoked me to anger. 
So he's saying, so why are you making these sacrifices unto me? He's saying, look, people, you are missing the point of the sacrifices. The, then God goes on and lists some other things they were doing that were making no difference. Look at verse number 13. He says, bring no more vain uh, 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 oblations. Oblations are gifts. That's your offerings. He said, look, why are you, why are you bringing these offerings to me? Why are, you doing, why are you going through the motions? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this unto me? Why? They're, they're vain. They're vain. Because your heart ain't right. You, you're rebelling. You're not living right. You're not doing right. You're rebelling. Uh, then look at on in there. He says, um, bring no more vain ob uh, oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbath. The calling of the assemblies. That's the calling together of the assembly. That would be like going to church, coming to church. And stuff. Why are you coming to church, he said? Why are you coming here to come and worship and such? Your heart ain't right. You're just going through the motions. Why are you doing this? You're rebelling. You're not living right. You're rebelling and such. You're just going through the motions. And then he goes on down in verse number 15. He talks about, he says, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. He's saying, why are you even praying to me? And why are you going through these things? Why are you doing this? Because people, your heart's, re you're rebelling. Your heart's not right. You've forsaken me. And you're making these offerings and you're coming to church and you're, and you're, and you're worshiping me and, you, and, and you're giving your offerings and, 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 and your monies and, and, and you're praying and all this stuff. Why are you doing it? Because your heart's not right. What difference are these things making? What kind of difference do you think these things make? What's the purpose? All right. So God is saying, look, these things that you're doing unto me mean nothing to me because your heart ain't right. So he's saying here, these things, these offerings, these, these even coming to church and, and worshiping me and these prayers and, and these uh, sacrifices serving me and, and everything else. All these things that you're doing, all these things that you're doing have no purpose with me because your heart ain't right. You see, God is more concerned with our heart. God doesn't need our sacrifices. God doesn't need our offerings. God doesn't need our gathering together. God doesn't need our prayers. What God wants is us. God wants our fellowship. God wants our heart. God wants our obedience. That's what God wants from us. And we have too many Christians that grow, go through the motions of Christianity whose heart toward God is cold as ice. And God is saying to them, when you're sacrificing to me and you have a rebellious heart, there's no purpose in that. Quit going through the motions of what, uh, of, of what someone who loves me with their whole heart would be doing when you really don't. In other words, you know, we got to get to a point where we quit playing this stuff. Quit playing church. Quit playing Christianity. Quit playing all these things. Because we, we can fool men. We can fool each other. Everybody can act like a Christian for an hour and fool each other. We can do that. But we cannot fool God. We cannot fool God. Now look with me what, what God told the children of Israel to do. That would mean something. Look at verse number 16. Look at this. He says, wash you. Make you clean. Wash you, make you clean. In other words, he's saying, uh, just like 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful just to uh, uh, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he's saying, look, confess your sins. Get your, get your heart right. Confess your sins to me. Confess them, confess them, and come clean. And then he says here, he says, uh, uh, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. And then he says, cease to do evil. So he's saying two different things. And he said, put them away from before my eyes. And then he says, cease to do them. In other words, don't do them anymore. In other words, you put them away. You know how many times people come to an altar and say, oh God, God, I'm so sorry. I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. And I, I'm so sorry. And boy, they, they get right and they walk out of these doors and, and they go back to doing what they're doing again. But God is saying, I don't want that. I don't want that Christianity. He says, I want you to take and put it away. But then he says, I want you to cease from doing it. 
In other words, if it's, if it's really heartfelt, if it's really something that you, you really uh, are being convicted of God and you're really heartfelt, then, then you can put it away and you can cease from doing it. God will give you the strength to do it. Many times we just don't want to do that. We, we get emotional and, and, and have an a, a, a emotion uh, uh, in, in the service and, we, and we, we come to altar, we make a decision for God and we walk away from here unchanged. God's saying, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. And then he goes on. He says here, he says uh, in verse number 17, he says, learn to do well. That word well there does, is, it means learn to please me. That's what it means. You look in the Hebrew, it means to please, to please, learn to please. He's saying, learn to please me. You know, you ought not worry about pleasing men. That ought not be your goal. Your goal ought to be, I want to please God. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're pleasing God, you're not always going to please men. It's not going to happen. They that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You will not be liked by all men. I learned a long time ago in the pastorate. I, you know, as, as I could get up here and I could just be as nice as can be. And I could be as nice and, and, and just be soft spoken and, and everything else. And I could just preach the word and be nice and, and real, not yell or scream or any of those things. And as long as I'm preaching the word, no matter what temperament I have, there's people going to get mad. You, you're not going to be able to please people. Be, why? Because the word is not designed to do that. It's designed, it's like a two-edged sword. It's going to hurt we Christians because we're going to see, ooh, you know what? Uh, that, that, that's, that's talking about me. I need to change. And sometimes people rebel against those things. So he says, look, why don't you just wake up and say, you know what? Today I just want to please God. I don't know what he wants me to do today, but whatever it is, God, whatever it is, I want to please you. And if we get that attitude, our lives could change. Then he says here, he says, I learned to do well. And then he says, seek judgment. Now, judgment there, again, is not meaning what we think. Now, judgment here in the Hebrew means ordinances, righteousness. In other words, uh, the word of God. You seek, you seek the word of God. You get into the Bible. You, you study this thing and, and you know it. Because if you don't know it, how are you going to live it? Well, because the preacher told me. Well, maybe the preacher told you wrong. Get in this book. Study this book. Know this book. Get in it. Study it. And, and know what it is so that you can know. You know, the, the, the easiest way to, to find out, is, uh, to, uh, to tell whether something's not not the uh, is something that is a lie is to know the truth that's the easiest way that's why you won't be you won't be caught up with some of the false prophets and, and false teachers and such like that if you know the truth you can immediately recognize and say that's not the truth that's not the truth you, and, and, look God is saying, look, seek judgment, get, get into it, know, the, know, know my rules, know my laws, know, know my word, know it. And then he, he goes on, the next three, I love these next three because these deal with helping others and such. Look at this, uh, the, uh, verse number uh, um, 17, it says, relieve the oppressed. In other words, relieve there means right the oppressed. Who would be the oppressed? Those that aren't saved. Those who, who are, are battling uh, and such. They, they, they don't have peace. Unless you're saved, you don't have peace. Because only the Lord can give you true peace. Only the Lord can do that. And one is who is not saved is not going to have that true peace. They can't. Uh, and such because they don't have uh, uh, the Lord uh, 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 with them and such. So we need to relieve or, or right the oppressed. We need to tell people about Christ. We need to let them know uh, that there is a Savior that can save them. There is a Savior that wants to, uh, to uh, help them and guide them and such. We need to relieve or right the oppressed. And then it goes on. He says, um, and judge the fatherless. Judge the fatherless. Again, this judge means govern. Isn't it amazing what you can learn when you, when you look up and, and study the Bible? This judge means govern. In other words, govern the fathers. In other words, help these kids that don't have a dad. Help them and guide them and, and give them love and, and such. Help them along and, 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 and guide them and such. You know, we, we have, we, 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 we're standing by too much in the shadows. We stand by too much in the shadows. And think, you know, like yesterday... Um, I come outside because uh, yesterday afternoon, like, the, the kids wanted to 
get beat golfing and stuff, so they asked me to go with them. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, so I go outside and I put my golf gloves in the truck. My neighbor across the street hollers at me and he says, hey, he says, Mr. Ellsworth, you know probably Dick Ellsworth, uh, he's from Canton, uh, but now he lives in Macomb, but, but uh, uh, he says, hey, he says, well, he says, we won two, two out of three so far. I said, yeah, yeah, so I started walking across the street and he started coming down his driveway for a minute there and I look over into the, the neighbor's garage and I'm looking in there and, and it's an older lady and I'm looking in there and there's a fire. And it, it was by the door, uh, the back door of the garage. And I'm thinking, is that fire in the uh, outside on the patio or what? And I asked him, I said, is that is there a fire in there? Well, she's probably just in there smoking or something, he said. And, and so I looked again, and sure enough, there's a fire. Uh, her garbage can, apparently, I don't know what she threw, a lit cigarette in there or what? But her garbage can had already melted all the way down. There's nothing left but the lid and a bunch of plastic. And it caught and, and was going up the wall. And so we ran, I ran over there and, and I grabbed the hose and I said, I said, uh, uh, turn the spigot on, turn the spigot on. So I, I uh, 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 hosed it down and everything. And man, there's smoke everywhere, you know, and everything else. And she comes to the, the, the door. Mr. Ellsworth tells her, he says, hey, you had a fire. I said, you know, you probably ought to call the fire department to make sure everything's out and stuff and get this checked out and thing. Oh, that's okay, she said. I'll get a fan and blow everything out and, and, and such. Now, I said all that to say this. You know, we could have. I could have just said, you know what? Yeah, you're probably right. That's probably just her out there smoking a cigarette out back or whatever. And could have walked on. And what would have happened? Her house would have burnt down. You know, we got, we got to be careful about these things. We need to step up. And we see things and see people that have a need. We as Christians should be trying to help in any way we can. What is it that Jesus said about, uh, uh, you know, you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto who? Me. And many times we fail. We get so busy and everything. We fail to realize this. And that's why he's saying govern the fathers. These kids that have no, no father figure, these kids that are growing up, there's so many of them nowadays, it's, it's saddening. And it's up to us to step up and try to help them. And think, you know, these kids up here this morning uh, and things, they were kind of cutting up and everything else. You know, uh, what some of you guys ought to do and, and stuff is, is come on up and sit with them during, during that time or whatever and, and talk to them and, and that sort of thing and keep them occupied and such because kids will be kids. And, and it helps them in, in, in things. They need that. We need to be, we be loving and, 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 and considerate and watching for those needs. And then he says here, he says, uh, he says, plead for the widow, um, plead for the widow. In other words, you know, you make sure, uh, you know, you be pleading for her. You be begging for that widow, be, be uh, watching for her and, and helping and such. Now, those three deal with, with helping those that are less fortunate. And we need to get back to that as churches. We need to take as, as Christians, we need to make sure that we are helping and doing what we can. I remember back in the day that before all the government programs, that's where people went. That's where they went. And because the government programs, we as, uh, we, uh, as the church, we've kind of backed off on all those things. But we need to say, you know what? No, we're going to do it anyway. Government program or no government program, we're going to be. And that's why we have a food pantry. But we don't get the food from the government. We, it's, you guys all brought the food in. And, and, and stuff uh, and things but we can help people in those things all right now now look at verse number 19 because here's the message are you ready look at verse number 19 he says if ye be willing that mean that willing there is desire a desire all right um, uh, if ye be willing and obedient in other words, if you have the desire to serve, in other words, he's saying you have the desire to serve because you want to serve. Do, do these things because you want to serve. Do, give the offering because you want to give it. Serve. Come to church because you want to come to church. Uh, you know, uh, do these things and, and help. Why? Because you love me and want to show that love for me. He said, do that. Do that. Uh, be obedient uh, and, and such. He's saying do these things. Look, we need to quit going through the motions as Christians. Because the truth of the matter is, these things make no difference to God if your heart ain't right with Him. 
There's no purpose in it. There's no purpose in it. Think about this. Look at verse 11 and 13 there. It says here, notice it says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices? And here's the key. Look at this. Unto me. Unto me. Think about this. Think about this. You're serving. You're giving. Your church attendance, your prayers, your helping others should be, you should be doing it unto God. Think about that. When the offering comes around and it's time to give the offering, you in your heart ought to be saying, you know what? It's time. Oh, I, I, I get to give an offering to God, not to the church. Well, that's the wrong attitude. That's, that's, you're not, you, that's not the way it ought to be. You ought to be, when it's the offering time to come around, saying, you know what? I get to give to God. I'm giving this to you, God. Here's my offering. Here's, a, here's my tithe out of obedience. And then here's a, a little bit more for the way you've blessed me this week. The way you've increased me uh, and given me this this week. I want to give even a little bit more to you. I want to give tithes and offerings because I'm giving it unto you, God. We miss that. We've gotten away from that. You know, I hear people say, well, you know what? We give this much to the church. Well, guess what? You're giving it to the wrong thing. Your focus is not right. You, you know, we, we, you know, we, we give uh, this much to God. I, you know, helping people. And as a pastor, I, I wish you knew how many, how many people that uh, I, I deal with and stuff. Uh, and, and, and things sometimes and, and I'm glad you don't but but and sometimes uh, you know you, you, people sometimes they just kind of do the opposite and, and it hurts and and sometimes they uh, people even sometimes even get mean and mad at me and such uh, and, and things and, and it breaks the pastor's heart but I got to keep in mind I'm helping them I'm doing this I'm doing that uh, not not for me, not to help this church to grow. I'm doing that to the Lord. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, I you know you know I, I'm at a point. We have got to refocus. This is this has helped me so much this week, even this last week. We have got to refocus. You know. It, any everybody uh, every member of this church could not tithe this week and in this whole month and you know what god would still provide if we as a church are doing what we're supposed to be doing and getting the gospel out and 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 the, uh, fulfilling the great commission and are smart with the, the finances that god gives us and wise with it god will take care of it god will pay every bill you know we get to we get sidetracked on this stuff we get too sidetracked, and, and this has allowed me to refocus on some things. This has allowed me to say, okay, what's the what's the important things here? What's what's the big you know what's the big picture? And the big picture is God. We've got to be get back to the point of why are we doing what we doing? It's because of God, what He's done for us. I didn't deserve salvation. I still don't deserve salvation. I don't deserve to go to him in prayer. I don't deserve for Jesus to be an advocate for me. I don't deserve to breathe his air. I don't deserve to pastor and preach and teach. I don't deserve to get any income. I don't deserve any of these things. I'm just a sinner. So we got to get back to it. So okay then. God thank you. I want to do this. I'm doing this to you. Whether... Whether people they they turn and 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 and, and, and disappoint you and or, or 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 are mean to you or or anything else, you know what? It doesn't matter, Lord, because I'm doing it to you. I'm helping that person because do it, helping them. I'm doing it with the attitude as I'm doing it to you because of what you do and have done for me and what you're going to, and what you are doing and going to do for me. We got to get back to this focus as as Christians. Let's get back to when you wake up, 
realize, you know what, God, you gave me another day of life today. God, I want to do everything I do today. I want to do to you. I have appreciation. I have a love for what you have done for me. If I don't deserve a thing. I don't deserve a thing. And I promise you it will help you. Because in, in your life as you serve. And those of you that have helped others and stuff. And you know you've helped others and you've helped others. And you've spent hours and, and, and finances and everything else and helped others. And you've been, you've been uh, stabbed in the back too and, 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 and things. And sometimes you, if you don't watch it, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get the, uh, bitterness. You'll get upset and everything else. But what you've got to understand is if you're doing it because you're doing it unto God, it ain't going to matter what kind of reciprocation you have. Good, bad, or indifferent. Because you're doing it unto God to show your love for a God who gave you salvation. To show your love for a God who has provided for you and protected you and give you that your every breath. And so I guarantee you Thursday night, Brother Bill was thankful for every breath he could take. He had a better appreciation for God on Friday morning when he woke up woke up alive. That's kind of weird. You know, if you woke up, you're still alive. But, but I guarantee he did. You know, we've got to refocus our lives. Why? Do we do what we do? It ought to be, I'm doing it for you, Lord. No matter what, anything, I don't want, I, look, just because of what you've done for me, I'm doing it for you. But we've got to get back to that. And I guarantee you, you could see a revival in America if we all could get back to that. We can have a change. We can see a real change in this world if we can get back to that. We have too many people, Christians, religious people, and went to church. I'm going to church. I'm going to support my church. Put in an offering. Oh, I'm supporting my, 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 my church. Uh, well, I'm going to run and go pick up kids for, for the church. No, it's not. I'm doing it because I love God. Because I want to show Him how much I appreciate all He does for me. I'm doing it for Him. That way, you know what? If you never get recognition, so what? You know, I, I, I've been around, I've been in this business long enough. If there's some people, if they don't get great recognition, well, you know, you never t said anything to me from the pulpit, blah, blah, blah. You know what? You shouldn't want it. Because it ain't you anyway. Anything good that gets accomplished ain't because of you. It's because God worked through you. We just need to take and refocus. And say, you know what? God, I just want to please you. I am doing this for you. And then hopefully God doesn't look down. We get to the sideways like the children of Israel did here and say, you know what? What's the, what difference do these offerings make that you're making here? I wonder how many times he's he looked down even today in churches all across America. As people put in their offerings and they got up and they sang and sang a big special and did all this stuff. And he's looking at saying, what difference does it make? You guys are you guys are rebelling against me. You're not living right. You're not doing right. You're doing it all for your glory and everything else. Your heart ain't right. What difference are these things making? We need to get back to God. I sure appreciate all you do and what you've done for me. I don't deserve any of it. God, I'm going to do this for you. Whether I get anything or not, because God, I don't deserve what I'm getting from you now. The least I could do is please you. And that's where we need to be as Christians. And let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, I pray you please help us, Lord. Lord, we've put too much stock in each other. And Lord, the reason why we've done that is we quit doing it for you. We've lost focus. You're the reason. It's all about you. 
It's all about you. Lord, help us to get back to that. Help us to refocus. And Lord, when we do something for somebody, it's not for, for recognition or to receive anything back. When we do it, we ought to say, you know what, I'm doing this, Lord, for you. Because I love you for all you've done for me. I don't deserve any of it. I want to please you. And then, Lord, when you look down and you smell a sweet savor because the hearts of the people are right. Lord, please help us, I pray. Change our hearts and our lives, I pray. Please. Please.